Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. In our last lesson, we had our first experience with a color wheel. Today, we'll be talking about how those colors on the color wheel can be used to express different kinds of feelings and emotions. Let's start by taking a look at a lot of different facial expressions. You can see how these people feel, right? How can you tell that this person is happy? What if I cover the mouth with a mask? Can you still tell that they're happy? How can you tell? We have all been taught that smiles mean you are happy and frowns mean you are sad. But there is so much more to it than that. Eyebrows can be tilted down to show that you're angry or tilted up to show that you're surprised. Cheeks can bulge upward when you smile or droop down when you frown. Eyes open wider when you're excited or they squint tighter when you're upset. And colors can change too. When you're angry, your face turns really red. And when you're scared, you go all pale. And all of that is just what the face is doing to say nothing of what the rest of the body tells us. Today, we're gonna to be drawing lots of different faces. We're gonna change the expressions to make them all look like they feel different, but we're also gonna be using the color wheel to help us determine what kind of feelings and emotions these characters have. Let's get started. Now for this drawing, I'm gonna be using both markers and crayons. You can use whatever drawing supplies you have. For starters, let's pick some really happy colors. If you look at a color wheel, what colors on that color wheel do you think are the happiest colors? Well, usually when we think about happiness, we think about brightness. So yellow and orange are pretty much the brightest colors on the color wheel, right? So let's start with yellow and orange making a really bright, happy face. Once you've gotten out a yellow and an orange, let's choose one of these colors that we're gonna color our face in with and the other color that we're gonna draw lines with. If I draw my outlines with a yellow marker and then I color it in with a yellow crayon, are you gonna be able to see the outlines? No, because they're the same color, it would camouflage. We're gonna think about contrast. So I'm gonna use an orange to draw the face and then use a yellow to color it in. Now, when we draw a happy face, first thing we should immediately remember is the smile, right? But there's a couple of other things I want you to think about. When you think about somebody who's really happy or really excited, they're usually really jumping for joy. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! And when you act like that, you get really big, right? So I'm gonna make my happy face really big. I'm gonna make a circle. I'm gonna make big wide open eyes with a dot in the middle for the pupil. Big circle, dot in the middle for a pupil. And the mouth isn't just gonna be a smile. I'm gonna make it into a semicircle so it looks like that mouth is open. And if I want, I can give this face a cute little nose. And what about the eyebrows? When you're really excited, your eyes open wide. So let's make the eyebrows up high above those eyes. Once I've drawn that face, I can color it in with my bright yellow. Remember, by having the lines a different color from the color that we use to color it in, we get some contrast. If I had used a yellow to draw the lines, you wouldn't be able to see them after I color it in with a yellow crayon. Why am I using a yellow crayon to color it in? Because yellow is the brightest, happiest color, and this is a bright, happy face. But if I'm gonna switch to a sad face, which colors on the color wheel do you think are the saddest? Well, if we said that the brightest colors are the uh, happiest, then the saddest colors would probably be the darkest colors, right? If we look at that color wheel, the darkest colors are the blues and purples, right? 
Now another way to think of it is that we th associate the color yellow with bright sunny days and warm summer days. And those are days when you can go outside and play with your friends. And we associate the color blue with rainy, dreary, wet days. And those are days when you can't go outside and you can't play with your friends. Also, we think about our tears. Except, wait a minute, is water blue? It's not blue, is it? See, I have a water bottle right here. It's not blue. It's clear. When we see pictures of the ocean, which is water, the ocean looks blue, doesn't it? That's because the sky up above it is blue and it reflects the sky and we see a reflection of the sky on the surface of the water. Yeah, that is why we use blue for sadness because we associate the color blue with things that are cold and wet. So what I'm gonna be doing is drawing outlines with a purple and then coloring in with a blue. Now, when you're sad, you kind of curl up in a ball, don't you? <laughs> so, you're actually smaller when you're sad. So I'm gonna make a sad face that's smaller than the happy face. I'm gonna make another circle, but it's not as big as that happy face, is it? And am I gonna have a big open smile? No, I'm gonna have a frown. Are my eyes gonna be big and wide and excited? No, they're gonna be squinty and sad. So I'm going to make my eyes more ovals instead of circles. And I'm gonna draw my eyebrows upside down. They're gonna look like smiles right above the eyes. Uh, sorry, they're gonna, yeah. They're gonna look like smiles right above the eyes. But they're, they're not smiles, they're eyebrows that curve down, right? If I really wanted to, I could also draw a teardrop because my sad face is crying. And again, once you're done drawing the outlines, you can color the face in. Take your time, no need to rush. We don't wanna scribble it. I don't wanna just go like that and then call it done. No, I want to take my time. I want to color neatly all the way to the edges. Don't leave any white gaps. This is a very dark blue. The darker the blue, the sadder it will look. But if I make it too dark, then I won't be able to see my purple lines, will I? So I got to be careful. I got to be careful not to make it too dark. Okay, so those are the two most common emotions that we want to try to express in our artwork. But there's a lot of other emotions that we could feel too, right? Like anger, like loneliness, like disgust, like scared, like surprised, like tired or frustrated or calm and relaxed. So let's take a look at that color wheel again and let's talk about how those different colors would react to all these different emotions. If we were angry, that would probably be more on the red side. Why? Because your face turns red when you're angry, right? If we were scared, that would be more towards the purple side. Why? Because if somebody comes up and punches you in the face, your face turns purple. If you were feeling uh, sick or disgusted, well, then it would probably be green. Not because broccoli is green. A lot of people say, ew, broccoli, gross, yuck. But broccoli is actually good for you. But no, there are things that are bad for you that are green, like boogers and <laughs> throw up, things like that. So green would be more on the sick and disgusted side. But does that mean that green is always gonna make your picture look sick and disgusting? What if I drew a beautiful landscape that had green grass and green trees? Is that gonna look disgusting? No. It's gonna depend on how I use the colors and what kinds of shapes I use with it. So let's use that as our, as our next example. We're gonna draw two faces that are green and brown. So once you've found some greens or browns to work with, 
Let's start by drawing a disgusted face. <laughs> so for starters on my disgusted face, I'm gonna make a brown oval. Not a circle. Notice it's tall, it's not as wide. For the eyes, on my disgusted face, I'm going to make one big eye and one really little. The really little eye is going to have an eyebrow down low touching the eye. The really big eye is going to have an eyebrow up high floating above it. And the mouth is going to be a wavy line, maybe even with a tongue sticking out. Maybe I'll draw a little nose. And then I'll color it green. Now I'm going to use my darker green. I, again, I don't want to push so hard, so dark that you can't see the brown lines anymore. But I'm going to use a darker green. Generally speaking, we use darker colors for emotions that are not happy. If you're really grossed out by something, if something is really disgusting, then you're going to use a darker green. Okay, but then what if I want to use the exact same kinds of colors, browns and greens, but I want to make a, a picture that looks really calm and relaxed. Imagine you're outside laying down in a hammock, just relaxing in nature. Seems like brown and green would be a great idea for that too. But see, here's a couple things that are going to be different. If you're laying down in a hammock, are you vertical? No, you're horizontal. So I'm going to draw an oval again, but instead of it being a tall oval, it's going to be a sideways oval. I'm going to draw an oval like that. Now, does that mean I'm going to draw a sideways face with the eyes over here and the mouth over here? No, I'm still going to draw a face vertical. So the eyes are going to be up top, but the eyes are going to be closed. Let's just draw the eyes as two smile shapes, two closed eyes. And then there's going to be a mouth, but the mouth isn't going to be like, yeah, it's going to be more like, hmm. So it's a really wide smile. And then I can put the little nose in the middle there if I want. And instead of using such a dark green to color it in, I'm going to use a lighter green. See here, I have a yellow green. That'll work great. And I'm going to color in the face. And so even though I'm using brown and green, which you would expect to be those disgusting colors, it doesn't feel disgusting, does it? It feels relaxed and calm. <sighs> Alrighty, now we have drawn a bunch of different faces together, but now I think it's your turn. I think you can figure out what kinds of colors would express other emotions? Like I'm going to do anger next with black and red, but maybe you want to draw somebody who's scared or somebody who's surprised or somebody who's happy, but not like excited, happy, just more like instead of. So you decide what kinds of emotions you want to draw and think about what kinds of colors would express those feelings. What's the face going to look like if you're expressing those feelings? How big or small is it going to be if you're expressing those feelings? And all of those things.
Okay, so I'm gonna stop here, but if you have time, you can keep making more. But I did want to point out a couple of things that I came across. These two faces are exactly the same shape, with exactly the same mouth, nose, eyes, and eyebrows, but there's something different. The colors are different. They both look surprised, right? But sometimes something surprises us in a scary way, like when somebody jumps out from behind you and says, boo! But sometimes things surprise us in a happy way, like when somebody jumps out with some flowers and says, Merry Christmas or Happy Valentine's Day. So we could be surprised in different ways. We can, you know, hearts, hearts show love, right? And pink shows love, right? Well, there's different kinds of love. There's love, like, I love my mommy. She makes me so happy. She takes good care of me. And then there's the, ooh, I love you so much. Right? There's different kinds of love. So just like we could use these colors to make two different feelings. We could use the same shape to make different feelings, or we can make the same feeling in different kinds of ways. There's lots of different ways you can express yourself. I want you to have fun with it. However much time you have left, just practice making lots of different faces. In this lesson, we had a bunch of fun making different kinds of faces and expressions on those faces. We especially had fun using colors to help us determine how to express those feelings the best in our artwork. In our next lesson, we'll be using the color wheel again and we'll be talking about the primary colors. I can't wait to see you then.